Hello, and welcome to the My Wool Mitten podcast. My name is Carrie, and I'm coming to you from the middle of the Mitten, Michigan's Lower Peninsula, where I live with my husband and our family. We have a small flock of Corridale sheep that we raise for their fiber, for their wool for spinning and, and knitting, and a beautiful woods, and our old retired barn cat, our horse Kyle. If you've watched before, you know all of that, but if you're new here, that's just a wee bit of an introduction for you. I'm coming to you today from our cabin, from the roundhouse that's on the back side of the property. If you follow me on Instagram uh, or on the podcast here, then you'll know about the roundhouse. And today I had to come and walk my kids' dog, and it's snowing, it's very cold, but I thought, I'm just going to take a few minutes and run up here and see if I could maybe get the knitting portion of this year's, or this January's, January, it's February now, of the, of the podcast. I had told you I wanted to tell you a little bit about the knitting that I was doing. I've talked to you a little bit about the sheep in a previous episode, and I have a spinning episode to share with you. It's all recorded. It's all edited. Just having some troubles um, getting to town to, getting it, to get it uploaded. Um, I have all the raw footage and I did think about redoing it and cutting some out, but there's a lot of stuff there that I do want to share with you. And so I think I'm just going to save it till I've got time to get it uploaded. Everything that I talk about there is still pertinent to my spinning right now. The only thing is, is that, um, it was filmed before Christmas and at New Year's Eve. So, you know, there's some Christmas tree lights up, but other than that. It'll be all right. So that will be coming. Keep an eye out for it. I'm going to run down through this as quick as I can because I need to get back to the house. I have poured my coffee. If you can see my breath, I didn't have time to build a fire in here. And so um, I'm just dressed up in my woolens and trying to stay warm and talk to you a little bit about the items that I've been spinning. Um, at the end of this, there's going to be a small giveaway. Um, just a little thing. So if you um, are interested in that kind of thing and want to stick around for that, that will be at the end. Just something that I'd like to share with someone else. And so let's get on to knitting. First of all, works in progress. And I don't have anything to show. I didn't bring those with me. I'm still working on sweaters that I had spoken about at the end of last year. They're kind of setting aside right now. Um, I have one gray sweater that only needs sleeves. I'm working on those occasionally. It isn't that I'm even on Sleeve Island or or tired of it or anything like that. I just, um, I don't know. I've just been picking up some small things and working on. I have the brown Kate Davies sweater that I started with a friend of mine as a mini knit along. Now, my friend's sweater is completely finished. It's steeped. She made a cardigan and has buttons and she's wearing it. Mine only has sleeves but it's all right it'll come when it comes and then the other sweater I'm spinning for so I haven't even started knitting on that yet and when you finally get to see the spinning video you'll see the fiber that I'm spinning for that but I have a few smaller things like I said if you follow me on Instagram uh, which I am at my I am my wool mitten on Instagram and Ravelry if you follow me there you will have seen that I've been knitting small things mittens hats cowls and uh, socks, although I didn't bring any socks to show you today, but, and I've really been enjoying those. Some friends who've put out some patterns. I'm not really buying yarn anymore, uh, especially if it's not a farm yarn. So I feel I can support them in other ways by buying patterns. So uh, let's get started with that. I'm going to start with the most recently finished one and I'm wearing it. And that is the Bubble Hearts Cowl by Sam B. from Bumblebee Acres Farm. And I adore this project. It, um, I, she had showed it a few times. As soon as the pattern was released, I, I purchased it. I had so many color choices that I couldn't decide for sure what I wanted to do, but I was actually inspired. These colors were inspired by some, a picture of my husband working in the fields in a, in a, on a spring day from a long time ago. And so this is all farm yarn. The white one actually is blended with alpaca uh, from a neighbor, but uh, so I started it. It took just a few days, and I'm going to cast on for another one. I have like three different color choices, color combinations that I want to do. But so I'll speak about this. Sam from Bumblebee Acres Farms 
and uh, it's a paid for pattern. Uh, this is a neat little stitch. I followed the pattern, except that uh, I, I made a mistake when I cast on, or at the beginning, not in working the, the pattern, but I was so excited to start the stitch, the bubble stitch after the ribbing that I missed where I was supposed to change colors here, the ribbing and then change color and then go. And so I started out with gray. And you know, actually that was okay. It gave me a nice chunk of the gray to start with and then worked my way up. And since I messed that up at the beginning, I tried to replicate that at the, stop, at the top. And there was another spot I should have changed colors here and I just left it. I, the only other thing that I did differently is I didn't work as many pattern repeats because I don't like a really high deep cowl. And so I think there was like three more pattern repeats that it calls for you to do, and I didn't do those. And so I've got it on around the neck of my coat and my hood here, just as something extra to pull up or down if I need, and plus to show it off. Now, I think the other thing that I'm going to do when I cast on the next time, the yarn that I have to do is a little bit thicker yarn. And um, like I said, I don't like a real big cowl. This one is okay over stuff. But I'm going to, this has you cast on 120 stitches. I'm going to do a smaller number. Um, I think it's a six stitch repeat. So whatever that works out to, somewhere around 84, I think that is. And that should work well. That's kind of my go-to number for cowls. Um, so I'm planning to do that. But a little bit about Bumblebee Acres Farms. What a neat family they are. They're also in the Midwest. They're in Illinois. They have a yarn dyeing business. They also raise sheep and they used to raise Angora bunnies. Now, I haven't seen mention of the bunnies lately, so I'm not sure that they still have them. I'm trying to keep my face in the direction so you don't get glare in the glasses. But anyway, um, mom and kids and just, I, I've never met them in person, but I like their values. I enjoy their posts. I enjoy the beautiful yarn that they dye. Um, one day I may treat myself to some, even though it's not uh, on farm yarn, but they do um, a non-superwash wool. So I could maybe try some of that. I'd, I'd really like to treat myself to that. Beautiful colors. They have yarn clubs um, based it on popular themes, books, movies, uh, miniseries, that kind of thing. And they also have a podcast called Caught in the Wool. And you would enjoy that. Just a lighthearted, easygoing podcast. So be sure to check them out and um, just say hello. And especially be sure to check out this cowl. I think you would really enjoy it. You know, and I think it's one of those ones, and you would see if you looked on Ravelry uh, at the project page, she did one in pastel colors. So that looks real spring-like. She did one in some darker colors. And then I did mine in, in the more natural colors. This color here is actually more green than it's showing up. It was a gray, silver gray that I over dyed. Super happy with this pattern. And I didn't wash it, block it, because um, I've just been wearing it and because I don't want it to be any bigger. So um, the Bubble Hearts Cowl by Bumblebee Acres Farms, project number one. The second project I'm going to show you is also from a friend who has a yarn business. And if you've watched the podcast for any length of time, you've heard me speak about my friend Ellie from Curio Yarns in Great Britain. Ellie is a magical dyer. Her yarn colors, I've never been disappointed in them. And if you were to try some, and I highly recommend it, I don't know how she does it, how she makes her potions. That's, you know, that's her thing. But you never look at them and think, oh, this is dyed yarn. You just look at the, the depth and the richness of the colors. They're never flat colors. And so beautiful. And she has been doing some fiber dyeing as well. So I can highly recommend that. Um, I've bought yarn from Ellie in the past. She's dyed some farm yarn for me in the past as well. But shipping being what it is, and because I have so much to use up myself, I probably won't be buying any more yarn for a while. But she is also a pattern writer. And so I can support her by purchasing her patterns and also because she does write nice patterns. So she started in January of 2020 
she's doing a whole series of patterns this year. And she started with a pair of fingerless mitts, so right up my alley. And these are called the Wolf Moon Mitts. And I'll try to hold one up. Let's see, it's dark enough in here. It's probably not going to show. Maybe it is there. It's just a simple fingerless mitt. And it's funny because I just had said to my daughter, you know, I think I really prefer fingerless mitts with no thumb gusset. Um, for some reason, that thumb kind of irritates me. So this one does not have a thumb gusset. It just has an opening. And I really like it. If I want to wear it over another pair of gloves, I can. Or another pair of mittens. And this is one of those patterns that is very simple to follow. But there's a lot of bang for your buck. The simplicity of the stitch pattern, where she places it and how it's worked, it just is very effective. And so I fell in love with the pattern. I did a tubular cast on, as I always do for my ribbing. And um, yeah, I just love it. Now, this, these are knit from Newtedon Yarn, the Swedish yarn from my friends Knut and Caroline. And so that's like an unspun yarn. I love that for mittens. This is the third pair of mittens or mitts that I've made from it. And it's, it keeps your hands so warm and so nice. I should knit it at a tighter gauge for mittens, but I just like it at my normal gauge. So again, I'm sure the color is probably not going to show. If I put it in front of my face, maybe it will. But I can put a picture in. Because this is some very, from some very special yarn of theirs. All of their yarn is special. But this one was called Cecilia's Song. So it really speaks to my shepherd's heart. But so fingerless mitts, wolf moon mitts from Ellie at Curio Yarns. She's on Ravelry Instagram and Etsy. Is she on Etsy? Anyway, you can find her on Instagram and Ravelry. And I'm looking forward to whatever your next pattern is, Ellie. I can't wait to see. As I might have mentioned before, I've been kind of going back to my knitting roots. I've gone back to simplicity, to just basic, uh, to things I did when I was a beginning knitter and a beginning spinner. I'm revisiting Elizabeth Zimmerman and Meg Swanson and enjoying, you know, going. It's like re why reinvent the wheel when something works? And so I, I have also been spinning and sampling some hand spun yarns. And I don't know about you guys, but at our farm, somebody always needs a headband, ski band. I'm always losing mine or leaving it in the car or something. And so uh, I have revisited a double knit ear band using some of the hand spun or little bits of yarn. And so I've got a couple of those here to show you. And again, I'll put a picture of those in as well to show you. Let's see. Color probably isn't going to show real well here. But they're just very simple. There's no ribbing. They're, they're knit in the round. So just around and around and around. But in the, there's two layers. And the idea being that if you have um, a coarser or more robust or heavier wool, put that on the outside. And then something softer on the inside next to your ears, forehead, what have you. And the size that I've made these then I can drop them down and have them be around my neck as well. And this was a pattern that I believe was from Spinoff Magazine years ago. Spinoff Magazine, I think. And it was using hand spun, but the pattern had you to, you just cast on a normal cast on, you knit with the coarser wool, you purled a row, you went with a softer wool, and then you did like a two needle bind off. And the first time I did that, and I was a fairly new knitter, I, I blamed it on myself. I thought I, it was my lack of skill, but it was terrible. Like the two needle bind off edge had no stretch to it. It wouldn't go over the head. Um, it was it was just not, not very well done. It, way too small also. I think they had you cast on like 30 stitches or something. So anyway, and I tried another one later on and it was a little bit better, but still not much. And I remember at the time, this time I knit the second one from that pattern thinking, you know, there's gotta be an easier way to do this and have it come out all right. And so 
now that I know how to do a tubular cast on and a provisional cast on and a tubular bind off, all of those things, that's, that's what I did. I did a provisional cast on, knit, did the purl row, knit the, the lining, and then I kept the needle or the stitches on the needle on the provisional cast on edge. I picked up those stitches and then I did, is it called a tubular bind off? Where it's like Kitchener stitch. And so that worked perfectly. You can see it's nice and stretchy on both ends. And I think the ends look very much alike. It is just a headband, so it wouldn't matter, but I just wanted to improve. These are both some gray mill spun yarn from our Cordale Sheep. This was some hand spun from roving from our from one of our ewes, and I think there's some Angora bunny in there and possibly some mohair, I can't remember. But so nice and soft. This light blue is not from our yarns, our sheep, but from a, a farm here in Michigan. Um, the, the farmer, the shepherd retired. They raised Merino and Rambouillet, and this was some yarn that they had. Kind of nubby, but you know, I don't knit with blues all that often, but I really like these blues together. So now I'm thinking, oh, maybe I want to make something in blues. And then this one is has the, the worst edge. I tried to do a different kind of bind off, I think, on this one. I can't remember. And I messed it up. So like you can even see there's a little loop there. But this was some hand carded, just roughly carded um, Icelandic wool with some dyed wool in it too for color. And then the lining of this one is unspun roving. Um, it's roving that I've spun with. I just had a little bit left. It's from our sheep. And I just drafted it out thinly and knit with it. Because these are knit on like size 10s, US 10s, US 11s. And I'm maybe not explaining it very well. But if that's if it's something that you guys would like to... I'm not going to write a pattern for it. First of all, it are, it's just a take on a pattern with some adaptation. Someone else has already written it. Or there's a bazillion other headband patterns out there. But if you just would like me maybe to show you what I do, maybe I could do that in another video. You know, if I'm not being clear. Just let me know. So those headbands, and like I said, they can easily go around your neck too. And because I had been making these, they, um, they contributed to another pattern that I made, that I just recently made. I have a love-hate relationship with hats, and always have. I don't look good in hats. I like to wear hats. I usually make them too big. So when the Marina Sky, Marina Skaya, Marina, how do you say that, Marina? I'll be sure to put it down below. Um, she announced, I watch her podcast, which I really enjoy, and Marina Skua, I believe. And she has a yarn dyeing company in Great Britain also. But she was having a knit along to cheer us up through the dark days of winter. And it was to, you could knit one of her patterns or you could knit with her yarn. And so I chose to knit one of her patterns. And I had been admiring this one for a while anyway. And this is going to make the camera crazy because this is um, quite a bright orange. But it's weowed or woad, W-E-O-D, and I think she said it means weed. <laughs> so I made this, and I thought, well, I'm going to try it. I'll work on it again. But one of my problems is I'm an extremely loose knitter, and so my ribbing, even if I go down a needle size or two needle sizes, is always sloppy. And so I've been making those headbands, as I mentioned, and they fit so well around my head. I thought, why not make the headband? In, in effect, but then just go on up with the hat, the rest of the hat pattern instead of doing ribbing. And because then, and I don't have ends woven in, so you might see some, I could make a double layer band around the ears. So that's what I did. This is all out of our own yarn, and this was dyed a long time ago. I just came across it in stash. I had wanted something orange, 
during the, our firearm deer season here in Michigan, you don't go to the woods or even near the woods without wearing orange. And so, and, and this is really a much more, you know, it shows extremely bright, but it's a real um, rustic vintage kind of an orange. And then the purple was also dyed and maybe I can hold it up here and you can see, or I will put some pictures in. It's kind of light and dark, even though it was over white yarn. And then that's what color the pattern is. It fits. I worn it. It's extremely warm and we haven't had really all that much cold weather, but I have worn it and it stays on like it should. And Marina, I love the pattern. I had been kind of put off of color work. I'd done a bunch of mittens and I'd done some other things even with working on some sweaters. And I was kind of tired of the attention it took or the long floats in some, you know, gorgeous patterns, but you know, with super long floats. This one is just a perfect color work pattern. It's easy to follow, it's effective, and I love the way it works up and then the decreases go. So this again, I'm gonna cast on another one in some more natural colors. But I was real happy how my the headband part worked out without doing ribbing. And so I want to mention also another pattern that I wanted to share and I forgot to bring. I think that they are in the pocket of a coat. It's another pair of mitts from another knitting friend who has a podcast and they are called the Glittering Quartz Mitts. And I will put some pictures in of that somewhere. Depends on how well I can do the editing. It is on my Ravelry page and I have shared it on Instagram. But they were written by Sarah of Gage Hill Crafts. And Sarah has a podcast that I enjoy very much. She covers a lot of things. Um, knitting, dyeing, natural dyeing, um, cooking. She hasn't done a cooking uh, episode in a while, but... I, I thought she's led me to some really good recipes. Her husband does home brewing, and so they talk about that, and I really enjoy that. And I really enjoy her patterns, and I fell in love with these mitts. She has mitts and a hat. When I saw them, I, I pick up stones and rocks and carry around in my pockets all the time, and they're all over my house, my car, everywhere. So I was really taken by that thought. But also in looking at her mittens when she was showing them. I had just been for a walk in the woods and they really reminded me of the bark of a tree. And so I knit mine out of a kind of a rusty brown, coppery brown color of Nutiden yarn and they turned out just beautifully. And what a well-written pattern. And I think Sarah mentions in her podcast that when she's talking about the pattern, that it's one of those stitch patterns that looks way more difficult than it is and it's just super effective in its beauty. And so I really enjoyed knitting those, Sarah. I, it was a well-written pattern. And so I'm going to make another pair of those in hand spun, I think, this time. Um, Sarah's doing a series right now of taking a fleece, a raw fleece, from sheep to sweater. And so she's been talking in depth about uh, that, sorting, trying different ways of washing. So be sure to go and check her out, check out her podcast, Gage Hill Crafts and uh, just really enjoyable and a beautiful pattern. I have another one of her patterns. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm anxious to try that. So I, I did want to mention those. And then I want to show you, finally, I brought out an old pattern since we were, or an old project since we were talking about hats because I was uh, cleaning out some things in the closet and came across this hat. Did I find it in the coat closet or did I find it in a knitting bag? I don't remember. See how bad my brain is? But I looked on my Ravelry page and I think it was 2008 that I made this hat. And it was from Spinoff Magazine. No, it was 2012 I made it. It was Winter 2011 Spinoff Magazine. I love, let's see if it will show. I love the top. And this is knit in singles, all hand spun singles that I made, and it's all from our sheep. And if I went back and looked, I probably have written down somewhere who each of the sheep were who contributed the yarn. This one, I there ended up being, I don't know what I was doing, maybe from when I was combing the fiber. There's little bits of red in it. 
I don't know. But anyway, it was it's a funny looking pattern, but it fits well and it doesn't look half bad on me. I wear it. And the other thing that I wanted to tell you about this is, as a little side note, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about fleece and wool production. As most of you know, if you have followed me for a while, we sell raw wool from our sheep to other spinners. And one of the things that I've always done, and I talk about this in other episodes where I talk about skirting fleece and preparing a fleece to sell, is that before I ever sell a fleece, before I ever offer it for sale, um, we share it, of course, I skirt the fleece, take away the dirty parts and the shortcuts and stuff. And then I take samples of the fleece from various parts, grab a handful here and a handful there. I bring it in, I measure it, I wash it, and I comb it or card it, depending on what the fleece seems like. Usually I comb it. And then I spin a little sample of it. I do that so that I know the qualities of the fleece and so that I don't find any surprise. Like I always test it, you know, do the little strength test. But sometimes, even though the length of a staple of the wool might be strong, the tips might be weak. And you'll find that in your processing of your combing, your carding. <clears throat> Or I have found something that's not always evident by looking at the raw wool, dander in a fleece that will show up when you're washing it. So that is my quality control. And I say that to you guys, uh, I just mentioned it. We haven't sheared yet this year. There's nothing for sale yet. But that's my quality control to be sure that I'm offering for sale something that you, that you should be happy with, that you aren't going to have any surprises. And so this was made from all of the samples of that year's fleece that I had tested. So anyway, just a, just a little side note there. Um, I think that's it for knitting, and I hope you've enjoyed sitting here in the roundhouse with me. I'll try to get some more pictures of the snow to include with this video. I wish I could stay here all day. I've probably let my coffee get cold. Um... Like I said, I have a little giveaway for you, and I may just film that at the house as just a separate little clip. I hope you all are well. I thank you all for watching. I really enjoy visiting with you. I've missed you guys. Um, there just hasn't been a lot of time to do a lot of stuff podcasting-wise. And like I said, I, I made a spinning video that I'm very happy with, and I really want to share it with you. So... I have a feeling here in the next week or so I should be able to get that out. So I'll try to put links to everything I mentioned down below. Just depends on how much internet connection I have when I'm putting this up, if I even get it up. I hope you all are having a wonderful February, that January was good to you, and that you're doing all right. That you're doing all right. Please stop in and say hi. Leave a comment. I love to read them. I do read them all. Um, comment here on or on Instagram or find me on Ravelry. Stay warm. Keep wool in your hands and in your heart and we will see you back here soon. And I'll see you in a few minutes for the giveaway. Take care guys. Maybe you can even hear the wind outside the door. I wanted to offer just a little giveaway. This is from my stash, so I hope you don't mind that it's a stash giveaway. The book has been barely cracked open. I think I knit one pattern from it, and there are several lovely patterns in there. The yarn is a superwash wool and nylon blend, perfectly fine yarn, 437 yards, I believe, but I'm just not knitting with fine yarn anymore. So I wanted to make it, I was going through, um, I've donated quite a lot of yarn and rehomed quite a lot of yarn, but I thought maybe I would make it for the viewers of the podcast. So if you're interested in this giveaway, the skein of sock yarn and the book Two at a Time Socks. Just leave a comment below here on YouTube. And on February 14th, Valentine's Day, I'll draw the winner 
and then I will announce it sometime after that, probably the podcast that will come out after Valentine's Day. So just leave a comment below. It doesn't even have to pertain to the socks, but leave a comment below and I'll draw from that for this little giveaway. And thank you for watching. Here's a close-up of how the yarn stripes. It stripes, but it's a little tweedy as well.